Hello and welcome to the fourth of four videos on Unit 3 of the Normans, How Did William Take Full Control of England Between 1067 and 1071? Now, I'm going to just give you a quick recap of the first three lessons by just putting information on the screen there for you. I'm not going to talk you through it word for word because that's what the first three videos were about but it's here for if you want to pause the video and take any further notes, double check your understanding, then it's there for you. This slide covers the first uprisings by Edgar straight after Hastings in London and then Edric the Wild in Hereford and then Geetha in Exeter. After that we went on to look at examples of William being more pleasant to the Anglo-Saxons, trying to win them over and an example, of course, was him letting many Anglo-Saxon thanes and earls keep their land. Perhaps not quite with as much power attached, but certainly he wanted to keep them loyal. He even offered his daughter's hand in marriage to Earl Edwin. Another example was Gospatric, and of course he was relatively pleasant to the citizens of Exeter, apart from the hostage. But of course the Anglo-Saxons continued to rebel. The reasons were quite obvious, unsurprising. And then we had the massive rebellions in the north. Now this slide mentions Harold's sons in Devon and but it's clear that the rebellions in the south were easier to put down. Harold's sons were not that welcome around Bristol and North Somerset and Devon. It was the uh, rebellions in the north which were more of a problem. It implies that the people of the, the, the south tended to accept William. There was even a later rebellion, it says at the bottom of the slide there, the southwest in October 1069, when the people of Devon attacked Exeter but the citizens there fought them off, so, so it showed that they were happy to accept William. So it was the north where the real problems were, especially when they were joined by the Viking army, the Danes. And with all these rebellions, it was three times William had to march north, castle building and harrying as he went. And it was at the, his lowest point, his nadir, when he decided he had to use the harrying of the north it was kill or be killed for William. So that takes us to his responses. Obviously he tried building castles but it wasn't enough. He paid the Danes to go home but the harrying of the north was the final piece of those rebellions. Surprisingly, despite the harrying of the north, there was still one further major rebellion which was Hereward's in Eli, sorry, Ely in the Fens, and there's details about that from video three. Now, how do we remember it? Well, the first lesson was Edgar the Eighthling in 1066, Edric the Wild in 1067, and Geetha in 1068. Now, those are quite simple to remember and we're going to try using a mnemonic and you might think well what's the point those are easy but of course it gets much more difficult as you add more details in let's look at our mnemonic I'm going to try to use with you Edgar goes wild for geese now you may think I've gone slightly crazy but just stick with me now I've got Edgar there smoking a cigar now um, the word cigar ends in G-A-R and the word Edgar ends in G-A-R and so that's just a way of helping you remember his slightly strange name, Edgar. Now, he goes wild in 1067 because that's when Edric the Wild went wild and he eats goose or geese because it rhymes with geetha in 1068. So Edgar goes wild for geese. Now you've got to get that in your head. Edgar goes wild for geese. It seems very easy. It seems probably pointless at this stage, but bear with me. There it is. Now the next lesson we mo moved on to look at Edgar the Eighth 
Ling, joined by Edwin and Morcar in 1068. And then in 1069, two more uprisings in the north, led by Edgar, the second one with the Danes, and also Edric the Wild came back. So we now need to add to our mnemonic. First of all, we've got Edgar joined by Edwin and Morcar in 1068. So on top of him going wild for geese, I'm going to have him going wild for Edam. So Edam represents Edwin and Morcar. It's a type of cheese if you're not, didn't, if you're not sure. So Edgar goes wild for not just geese, but geese and Edam, or goose and Edam if you prefer. So that's 1066 to 1068. In 1069, we've got two uprisings from Edgar, and we've got the Danes arriving and Edric again. So at this time I've got him smoking two cigars. To try and remind you, he leads two uprisings. Edric, of course, comes back, but I've got Danish bacon. Now, I'm using the, the B might help you remember Asbjorn with his B in his name. The Danes are, of course, the Vikings. So that's one way of remembering that. Now, so there it is. Edgar goes wild for geese and Edam. Edgar, with his two cigars, goes wild for Danish bacon. The last lesson we looked at was Hereward the Wake, who was joined by the Danes. So what do we do with this one? We leave Edgar away and we find Hereward only awakes for Danish smoked bacon. The smoked bacon this time is to remind us that Svein, the king of Denmark, was back this time, not just Asbjorn, so the smoked is to give you the SV or the Swain, uh, and that hopefully is the end. There it all is. So you've got to try and work on that. Remember it Edgar goes wild for geese and Edam, Edgar goes wild for Danish bacon, but Hereward awakes for Danish smoked bacon. So what do you do with it? Just write the dates down in a list, 66, 67, 68, 69, and then 70 to 71. Write the mnemonic in order, so you've got to just try and remember, where do we start with? Edgar goes wild for geese, and then see if you can build up the whole set. You should end up with something like this. Once you've got the mnemonic sorted, you should be able to just write in the rebellions for each year. So this mnemonic gives you this quite complex memory of the rebellions for each year in the correct order. This final slide, I'm not going to take you through it, but those of you who'd like your extra detail, you've got some special extra added in there to help you, the stuff in bold, which you, if you loved the mnemonic, you can perhaps try and work that stuff in. Have fun. Cheerio.